So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm here with an uh, excellent bassist and someone who's really important to the history of this music, Mario Pavone. And uh, Mario, uh, you got started uh, playing after poetry passed in 1967. And tell us a little bit about how that came about. Well, I actually started earlier. I started in 1964. Well, I started, really started in 1964. I had, like, I had heard some old trains and I heard quite a lot of jazz when I was entering college, the School of Engineering. And uh, but I actually went to see Paul Train recording the seminal record Lives of Bill Vanguard in nineteen sixty one. It was a transformative experience for sure. Uh, I came up I came back, it was my honeymoon actually, and uh, I came back and in Chicago to see a great guitarist who was from Waterbury and moved out there and eventually ran the Guitar Institute of Technology in the late great Joe Diorio. And I was inspired to play and uh, actually got a couple of lessons and was off. And within uh, half a year I was in Europe with Paul and Mary Alshaw. So uh, Train had a really great influence on me as, as the musical I did go to his funeral, uh, just added to the whole thing. Uh, St. John's Divine, 1967. Uh, another experience over the sphere, hard to approach where the train was laid out up there on the altar. It's slow coming up, and it was thousands of spirit, spiritual, spiritual things there. Albert Aller and Tommy Flynn, and there's some things up there, who was playing up above in the, in the choir and saying, it was an incredible experience, and that, nonetheless, okay. just spurred me out even more. Uh, and, yes. you know, I've got to look back since uh, yeah. Spirit of Train uh, was, was the opening thing for me, and to this day, it's still, it's still as palpable as real as ever. So, you know, uh, I recently did an interview with Steve Kuhn, and yeah. I know your, your latest record is uh, all his compositions. Well, some of it's, it's, it's based on, it's really not, it's based on, uh, the record is called Art Trio, and Craig Taborn and Gerald Cleaver, and it gets released September 1st of this year. But uh, and I wrote some liner notes, and I talked about how uh, the, the music was based on near obsession, deep immersion in several vinyl recordings at the time. First among them was uh, not that well known Steve Kuhn called Three Waves with uh, Steve Swallow on upright, Eva Roca Sims on drops. And uh, also based on the same rhythm section with Paul Blaze in the seminal album called Floater, based very much on Andrew Hill's Smokestack record, which was a trio record where an added basis Richard Davis and Mark yes. Hughes. Uh, and several other records, Malachi Favors and you know, Richard Abrams, a great duo. Yeah. And That's such uh, great music, man. Yeah. yeah. I saw Andrew Hill in his last performance uh, before he died in William Patterson. And I couldn't even talk at that point because his wife translated the questions. Yeah. And when I did that, I mean, it was just, uh, yeah, something else is, uh, you know, uh, it's so great that you guys are still out there doing things. And, you were part of that time shortly thereafter. And I had very much influenced by that time. It was in the trio music. But those pieces I cite were extremely strong pieces. And uh, we didn't have any rehearsal time. We just looked at the music as we hit the stand. And, uh, it's got players as great as, as Craig and, uh, and Gerald. Yeah. Uh, I think we captured uh, the intended. Intensity, sure. Yeah. Well, uh, Mario, uh, you know, as a as a bassist, you, know, you came into playing the bass with very unique approach. You know, you were very soft out. So uh, it's amazing that you just threw yourself in with playing. I did. It was I was very inspired, and uh, immediately I was able to produce a really good sound. I really no technical knowledge of it and ended up within 
months playing in Europe and all that. And uh, traveling around the world. And, and, and the sound at first carried me through. Subsequent to that, I became a lot more popular. And so the and hired me to play in Stanford, to play more in the Canada and the jazz world. And I learned some things about them. And of course, the more you learn about music in general, the more you realize, oh my God, it's just it's a forever path and wider and wider for wonderful information. Yeah. But uh, I, 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 everything I write now and everything I play still comes from that original impetus of uh, playing purely from something now. I base a lot of my compositions on something Mingus talked about. On the graphics of the bass, the visual component. If you were standing outside the bass, you would get the feel of it. And you looked at patterns, you know, how many cross patterns you go from first and last figure to fifth. Well, I ended up being gravitated to a diagonal, which is the right terms. And now uh, a lot of my pieces still there. And that's the approach. Yeah, I mean, I really like uh, the use of the double stops as well. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, Taking a few lessons with you when I first started at Litchfield many years ago. It's great to be back here in Litchfield and uh, talking with my teachers and mentors. And you're certainly a mentor of mine and I'm glad to have been able to sit down here with you and, and catch up a little bit. And, uh, tell us a little bit about what the future has in store for Mario. What's in your Well, I'm going to just keep going my path and, and, and writing. I've got to. Uh, this record being released in September, as I said, uh, and I'll work for uh, some gigs in New York City in November of this year. And I'm mixing and ready to come out probably on the clean feet of uh, Portugal. Uh, I'm recording that and I just, uh, I'll come next. I've always wanted to.